Hey, what's up, Dave Yourself First? Today I'm gonna to do a quick video and show you how you can test the car relay. Now, I did a video on this uh, a couple years ago when I first started making videos and putting them on YouTube. There was a lot of interest in that video, but there was also a lot of questions about how to test the uh, relays or that are, you know, a three pin relay or a four pin relay or relays that have no diagram on them and whatnot. So uh, I'm gonna to try to clear those up uh, in this video. Okay, so the things you'll need to do this test are uh, 12 volt battery sorts some uh, alligator clips to make life easier, a multimeter, and also a test light to use as a current draw on your relay when you go to test it, okay? Okay, so first we'll start with this five pin relay. What you wanna do is just uh, take a look around it and you'll usually find a, a diagram of the circuit that's inside this relay, uh, right either on top of it or at the side. Also each uh, pin has a number, if you look very closely, each pin is numbered and those numbers correspond to, these, uh, to the diagram. But if your relay doesn't have a diagram or you don't see a number by the pins, uh, don't worry, I'll show you later on in the video how you can determine which uh, pin does what on, this, uh, on the relay, okay? Okay, now for the purposes of this video, I've drawn the diagram that you see on your relay, also the position of the, each pin and how they're numbered on this piece of paper. And here's a look at the diagram. So this is gonna be your uh, control circuit. Whenever power is supplied to the circuit, uh, and it's energized, it uh, activates the switch circuit. And the switch circuit, as you can see, the number 30 pin, which is this pin right here, is always has a power supply to it, and normally it's in this position. When this is energized, it activates the switch, and once it closes, the power supply goes from number 30 to pin 87, and this is the pin that supplies the power to whatever accessory you're trying to activate. Okay, so in my last video, a lot of people asked, uh, how do you know which pin is the ground and which one is positive? Well, uh, usually speaking, number 85 is your ground pin, but if you don't have a diagram, it really doesn't matter which way you hook up the, your, uh, your power supply. You know, you can either uh, put, hook it up to 86 and 85, and if you don't hear it click, just switch it around. And if you hear it click, then you go on to the next step. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is check for resistance between 86 and 85. Now, this circuit has a resistor or a coil, depending what kind of relay you have. And uh, you are going to have some resistance in this circuit. And the correct amount of resistance, uh, depending on your relay, is about 50 to 120 ohms. Okay, so you get your multimeter and you put it on the ohm settings. And for this measurement, since our highest number is 120, we're gonna to go to the next uh, level up, which is 200 ohms, okay? Next, we take our measurement. As you can see, we got 73 ohms, and that's well within spec, so we're fine in this circuit as far as resistance is concerned. Now, if you get a reading that's below 50 or above 120 ohms, just go ahead and toss the relay. There's no point in going on any further. It's not a good relay, and you need to replace it. Okay, what we're gonna do next is to get our power supply and uh, supply power to supply power and ground to the 86 and 85 pin. As we talked earlier, we're gonna supply ground to the pin number 85, and then we're gonna supply power to pin number 86. Now, when you do this, you have to hear a click, and that's the click is the sound of the switch activating and going from 87A to 87. Okay, now if you don't hear a click, again, go ahead and toss the relay because there's no point in going any further. But even if you do hear a click, you need to go further and test the relay for the, further in order to be 100% sure it's a good relay, okay? Okay, so I don't know if you guys can tell, but this thing is clearly clicking, so we're so far so good. Okay, what you wanna do next is to, uh, after you activate the circuit and you hear the switch click, you wanna measure the resistance between the 30 and 87 pin because uh, you know, the switch might work and it might click into place and most people, I know that they would uh, consider that a good relay after you, they hear the, the switch click, but you really need to be uh, really uh, thorough when you're testing relays because if you make a mistake and you consider a bad relay a good relay and you throw it back on the car, you can spend a lot of time diagnosing other issues which uh, have nothing to do with anything. It was just a relay that you just uh, misdiagnosed. So what you want to do again is to uh, measure resistance between 30 and 87. So in order to do that, again, you make sure your multimeter in the, you put it on ohms, and then you just touch the pins, number 30 and 87, which are gonna be these two pins, 
and get uh, your measurement, okay? As you can see, well, I have a, a 200 setting yet, so it's showing 0.5, which is really no, no, no reading at all here. At, on 2K, it's going to, there we go. So you got zero, pretty much zero resistance. Uh, so now, yeah, we're good there as well. So let's say you want to be even more sure that, that this relay is working properly, okay? So uh, in order to uh, simulate what's happening to a relay when it's activated on the car and it's uh, powering an accessory, uh, we're going to have to supply uh, 12 volts to the 30 pin, and uh, pin number 30, which is this guy right here. Okay, so here we got, I got this from my uh, battery, I guess going to connect it to pin 30. Obviously we're doing while this whole thing is, uh, while the, the circuit is activated, okay? Okay, next you want to get your 12 volt test light and ground it first and then you want to touch pin 87. Now you do this so that, you know, you're sure that power is, uh, not only there's no resistance in the circuit, but also when you put a draw on the number 87 pin, you know, it can uh, draw current enough from it to, to light up this uh, test light, okay? And here's the 87 pin, which is this guy. There we go. As you can see, our test light lights up and there are no problems with this relay. Okay, so now we're sure beyond a reasonable doubt that this relay is a good relay, <laughs> okay? Okay, now a four pin relay. Basically, the only difference is that this relay doesn't have a 87A which is uh, where the switch is normally resting at. It, uh, instead, it just has four pins. It has one control circuit, and then this is the switch circuit. And when this becomes activated, it activates the switch, which is normally in the open position, and it closes it, and then current travels from 30 to 87 again to your, uh, to your accessory, okay? And here's how the pin are numbered. So again, basically what we're gonna do is uh, first test for uh, Resistance between 85 and 86. There we go. We've got also about a 76 on this one, which is also within spec. Next, we'll supply power and ground to 86 and 85 and listen for a click. There we go. And next, uh, with this circuit energized, you'll measure resistance between 30 and 87. And again, it should be next to no resistance in that circuit when it's closed, okay? There we go, we got all zeros there. And if you wanna use your test light to double check everything, again, you, you supply power to pin number 30. And then ground your test light and then touch 87. There we go, so that works as well. Okay, now as far as how to test the three pin relay, now I don't have a three pin re relay here to show you, but uh, basically, the only difference is that on a three pin relay, the power is only supplied through one pin, which is pin 86. It supplies power to the, to the control circuit, and once that's energized, it closes the switch, and it also supplies power to the 87 pin, which goes to your accessory. Now, on the four pin relay and the five pin relay, it was, uh, there was another pin here, uh, pin 30, that supplied, actually supplied the power to your accessory. But on this, uh, on this uh, three pin relays, the power is supplied through only the pin number 86, okay? And the way you uh, test this is uh, basically first measure for resistance between 86 and 85, which is gonna be these two pins. Make sure they're within spec, and that is again 50 to 120 ohms. And then after that, you can't really uh, do a resistance test between 86 and 87 because you're not supposed to check resistance when a circuit is energized and it's gonna damage your multimeter for sure. Uh, so you can't really do that test, but you could do the test light test, which is to, after this is energized, you get your, uh, you ground your test light and then uh, touch 87. And if your test light comes on, then you know this is a good relay and you can, uh, you know, cross that off your, uh, your list while diagnosing a problem.
Okay, now as promised, here's how you test a relay that doesn't have a diagram or any numbers on its uh, pins, okay? Basically, you start off by finding your control circuit. Your control circuit is the one that's supposed to have an ohms reading of between 50 to 120 ohms. You just uh, get your multimeter, set it to the 200 scale, and then you just uh, touch uh, random pins un unless you get a reading of between 50 to 120. There we go, we got uh, 112 ohms. So we right off the bat, we found our uh, control circuit, which is gonna be these two pins, okay? Now, on these we have no reading, and no other combination of two pins, we have no reading either, which is good but it also means that this relay is normally in the open position, okay? Okay, so next it's time to energize that control circuit. Again, we supply power and ground. It doesn't matter which way, as long as you hear a click. There we go, or a click. It should usually work in both directions, okay? And again, when you hear the click, now you can uh, measure resistance between these two pins, and there should be no resistance between these two pins, okay? There we go, we got 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, which is again next to nothing. So we're good there too. Okay, next up, it's time for a test light test, but since we don't have uh, no diagram, we don't know which one is 30, but it doesn't really matter as long as, uh, you know, power is traveling uh, freely from 87 to 30, and you can draw current from either, Either one, it doesn't matter if you know which one's 30 or which one's not. So we're gonna hook this alligator clip to this one, and then this one should light up. Now, just to be on the safe side, go ahead and get it on the both sides, okay? There we go. So that one passed as well. So now, we're sure that this is also a good relay, and we did that without any diagrams or numbers on the on these pins, okay? Now on a five pin relay, you can find your 30 and 87 A pin when you do a resistance test on, uh, on all the pins and then you find two pins that have no resistance or next to nothing. And those have to be 30 and 87 because these two pins uh, will have a resistance of 50 to 120 ohms. This one is not connected to anything while the, the switch is not energized, which is while this is sitting right here. And these two are the only ones that are connected uh, and should not have an ohms reading, okay? So now we're just gonna go around and test uh, random pins until we find the, the one that I think we just did that doesn't have a reading. There we go, we got 0.5, which is next to nothing, and it was these two pins. So now we would mark these down as 30 and 87. We'll find out later which one's 30, which one's 87, okay? And then again, you go around and uh, test the remaining uh, pins. Look for a reading of 50 to 120. There we go, we got 74. And now we find our 85 and 86 pins. Now it's just the same thing, same procedure. You energize this circuit, and then uh, you measure resistance between 30 and the other pin which is gonna be the only remaining pin that we didn't get a reading on, then that will have to be 87. The pin that was the common pin between 30 and 87 and 30 and 87A is gonna be your 30 pin, uh, pin number 30, and then you can supply power to that and then do the test light uh, test. And that's all there is to it, okay? All right, so hopefully that didn't just confuse the hell out of people out there. <laughs> But if it did, just leave a comments or questions uh, down below this video and I'll try to uh, answer them as much as I can. Okay, so yeah, if uh, you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.